Thank you for agreeing to a recorded call. Barbara, you are a senior that uses Medicare and have used Medigap and MedAdvantage. Is that right? Yes. Okay. So thank you for speaking about your experiences. As a senior in the United States right now, do you see a lot? Are you getting a lot of calls all about AEP? I'm getting calls and text messages and email messages and I'm trying to fist them all out so I don't have to answer them all, but it's not working. It's not working. So how do you feel about all that? All crammed into October and November and a little bit of December. And you dump on that on top of all of the medical requests yeah. for money, et cetera, et cetera. And it's an awful lot of times that the phone rings and it's not relevant to you at all. <laughs> I don't feel good about it. <laughs> I guess not. Just for some background, before your retirement, what was, what did you do? I was a registered nurse and I specialized in psychiatric case management at a major medical center. Okay. And then you came into the whole turning 65, choosing a plan, choosing a prescription drug program. You were pretty well equipped then, right? It was, I just, in my head, I just transitioned from the hospital that paid all that stuff to somebody else that paid all that stuff. And I don't remember the process very much. I actually think that an agent suggested that I should look at an all in one or a Medicare supplement. I was at that point, I knew the differences and I was already convinced that the supplement was the best plan. And I chose the most expensive one there was because it was, it covered the most. Gotcha. So just with all of that knowledge, you've been on those plans for a while now. How important do you think it is for somebody who's first turning 65 to find the right agent to help them look for available plans that fit them based on their health and their finances? I'm going to say it's extremely important and I want to give a little bit of explanation of that. Recently, I noticed that the supplement plan that I was part of had been increasing the costs every year and it was getting very expensive. And I thought it might be a good idea to look at some alternatives because it was getting beyond my budget. And I don't even remember exactly how I got connected with an agent. But after spending some time with him and thinking that everything was fine and everything was good and it was all done, it turned out that he had never actually enrolled me in a plan, even though I thought I had been enrolled. And when I tried to problem solve that, it turned out that he had left the company and they were giving me to somebody else. <laughs> so it was, <laughs> it was a little tricky. Let's put it that way. Wow. Okay. So would you think it's then, and it, it's a leading question, maybe find somebody who represents a lot of different choices and options? Absolutely. You used the Medigap for years and you did switch over to that MedAdvantage and it was because the costs were going up choosing an insurance company that has a huge pool of people paying into it, not a new upstart company might be the best thing if you want your rates to climb slowly instead of skyrocketing. You did switch back to a Medigap plan. Is that what happened? Yes, I did. Okay. I was, I had the Advantage plan from December until, oh, about I think March, if my memory is not messed up. In that just short amount of time, I discovered that all the things that I knew about Advantage plans were still true. <laughs> um, <laughs> you, know, you can't just go to a doctor. You have to wait for them to spend weeks deciding whether or not they're a participating provider. The other thing I noticed about the Advantage plans is that they advertise all these wonderful extra benefits. Uh, dental and eye care and go to the drugstore and get whatever you need and all of those things. And yet they're all very, very restricted. It doesn't really happen. I did not have eye care. I did not have 
dental and they give you a little catalog that you can choose things from that you can get at the drugstore, but it has to be the brand that they've chosen. You can't choose the brand that you want. Right. Yep. So, so maybe you like Crest toothpaste and they want you to buy Colgate, just as an example. Right. Monday morning quarterbacking, the decisions, you had to try it to figure out that you didn't like it. That's my personality. <laughs> <laughs> we all happen to make our own mistakes. <laughs> Advantage plans for a lot of people, that is what works the best. I think the real takeaway here is, is you really need to dig in deep and find an agent that you trust and make sure that you have all the options that are available to you in front of you so that you can make the best, most informed decisions. Getting locked into a plan that doesn't cover your prescriptions or your doctor, if you're set on your doctor, that could be pretty traumatic for somebody who's 65 or older, or even somebody who's 50. Well, if you have the time for me to give you an example, I now live in a retirement community Several people found that they couldn't go to the facility that's part of our community because they were not a participant of the Advantage plan. And so everybody was very upset because they did not understand that you need to know who your providers are before you choose your insurance. Yep. So are there any words of advice you can give to someone who's newly approaching Medicare turning 65? Forget the idea that you have to learn by making mistakes. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds like a great idea. Finding an agent that is willing to take the time to look at what your preferences and needs are and match that with your budget and match that with providers that participate in the plan that you're looking at. Absolutely. It's a big, important decision with lots of impact. What about prescription drug programs? Do you review yours every year to make sure that you still are getting the best bang for your buck? I, my agent has done that for me and told me if I need a change. I don't really like the idea of changing. It's just like automobile insurance. They say you need to check every year with that too. To me, that's an awful lot of time and uncertainty and paperwork and making sure that you have all the documents if you change from one to another. I would rather find one that I like and just stick with it, even if it costs me $10 more a month. Got it. Maybe next year it'll be $10 less a month for the same company. <laughs> Funny. Thank you very much for your time. I know time is valuable and I'm just hoping that the words that you gave here today will be helpful for somebody else. Yes. Okay. Bye-bye.